Hello, lovely ladies in the Goddess Creations for Women group and beyond. Wow, we are in week eight of our Goddess Creations Empowerment Marathon. I am Shamna Lee Gray from Goddess Creations, your host, and also sometimes known as the Empowerment Midwife. Now, we are on to interview 16 of our whole schedule. And I have with me the wonderful and delicious Lorraine Crooks. And Lorraine Crooks is going to be speaking on sexuality, fear, and shame. Now, Lorraine is also known as Laurie and is a former middle leader and teacher in secondary education, so in school. Alongside this, for over 20 years, Lorraine had a secret life of swinging, kink, and BDSM. And you can look that up on Google. A life filled with shame and fear and self-judgment. Now, following bouts of depression because of this shame and fear, Lorraine went on a personal journey to explore her sexuality and lifestyle on a much deeper level and overcame her fear and shame through mindfulness, energy work and tantric massage. Lorraine Crooks is the CEO of Shelky, where she helps others who are feeling shame, fear or in confusion about their sexuality. She works with people who are disconnected or challenged by their sexual energy and those who have suffered trauma as a result of negative experiences. And I know that she, that she's going to be talking to us more about that. So um so a bit lost my thoughts sorry about that now she works as i said with people who have uh, suffered that trauma and lorraine says that stigma social conditioning and poor sex education poor sex education have created fear and shame and driven our sexual needs into the shadows underground let's say and that of course we know and also is in social media so Lorraine is going to be talking to us much more about this how we how our society has disconnected us from each other and our body and our heart now Lorraine also heals and teaches people to honor their uniqueness and express their sexuality she opens up conversations allowing love and light on one of the most natural parts of us being human beings and believe me this lady is wonderful so Lorraine is going to be talking about how to overcome shame and embrace your sexuality and I am very 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 pleased to invite onto the screen the lovely Lorraine Crooks to talk so hello Lorraine thank you for joining us my pleasure and my pleasure yes that was a very long introduction, <laughs> quite a mouthful. So how would you say that you, how would you describe it, what it is that you do? So um, in, my, in my work, in my business, I use um, energy work and tantric massage to help people to connect back to their sexuality. So those people that might be disconnected from their partner or from their physical or energetic self, maybe women that have been through the menopause, um, childbirth, all sorts of things can disconnect us from our, our physical and energetic connection to sexuality. So I help people address that and move forward. So um, how did you come to this? Because we have now entered into the I help people, but what is it that you do or where have you come from? What is you coming out of the shadows? So as you said, I was a, a secondary school teacher um, and alongside that life, um, Secondary school teacher, mum, just kind of doing other things that everybody does, having a good job, uh, loving family, lots of support around me. But there was this other side of me that was curious about who I was. And um, I explored my sexuality through swinging, through kink, through lots of other explorations and different ways of looking at my sexuality. But there was a real guilt and fear and shame around doing that because of social conditioning, the way I was brought up, just lots and lots of things little bits that we pick up as we go through our childhood it was just like this is wrong I shouldn't be doing these things I should be married and settled down and doing lots of other things that I wasn't doing and I, I just made myself so ill kind of moving between the two energies of my job and who I was um, to the point where I had bouts of depression had alopecia and then just decided something had to give and I needed to make a decision either I carried on with my career and the status and, and how society perceived me as a teacher mm. or I made a decision to focus on finding out who I was uh, and my sexuality was a huge part of that 
Um, and I gave up teaching. I had to make that decision. I gave up teaching and put me first. So what is sexuality then, Lorraine? Let's, yeah, what is that? Yeah, it's a very big word that covers lots of lots of things. If you Google it, there's just like, it, it, it's, it's so many different things to so many different people. Um, so for me, it's about my beliefs. It's about my emotions. It's about my feelings. It's about who I am as a person, how I show up in the world. Yes, it's about sex. Yes, it's about intimacy. Yes, it's about pleasure. Yes, it's about who I choose to partner with, whether I'm bi, whether I'm straight, whether I'm gay. But it's it's really who, how and who I show up as in the world and how I express myself in as an individual and in relationships. So when you, you also mentioned something about judgment of sexuality, what how does that express itself? Because um, how do we suffer from this judgment of sexuality, or how would you describe that? Because um, yeah, this is this is a big subject. So how how would you then describe that sexuality judgment? What where do you find that? Where do you find that in your work, and where do you find it in your personal life or in you in the past? So I would say for me, the judgment um, that I had around what I was doing for twenty years plus as a secret life was probably about social conditioning, social media, expectations of others, um, lack of understanding and knowledge about what I was doing and how it was portrayed. Um, I think the biggest part of the judgment was probably judgment of myself, because actually when I opened the conversation later in life with people talking about the things I was doing in my life, very few had great judgment on me. Um, and people just expressed that if I was happy and it was safe and I was it was consenting and I was an adult, then actually what harm was it doing? So most of the judgment came from social media, social conditioning, definitely poor sex education mm. um and just just the building blocks that i'd put in place that i felt that i had self-judgment um and that people would judge me and in fact that isn't necessarily the case i'm not saying that as a teacher i would have been openly accepted and warmly welcomed in the staff room had i explained and explored <laughs> over a conversation the coffee all the things i was doing in my private life but at the same yeah. time but that is an important question because this is where it actually does hurt, I would say, is the fact that it was a secret life for 20 years, the the, the kink and the fetish and the BDSM. Um, that is huge to have to carry. Um, but well, not only that, but I, I would, there's a little step before that is how comes you were driven to that seen that world that many have judgment about how comes you were driven to that and uh, instead of you know yes how how come what was the drive the lure for you to enter into that world and let's just say it's not only about you and i'm saying it also to the viewers it's not only about lorraine here but it is what is that urge that drives us to do something that other people have judgment on how does that work i i don't think so much that i was lured into something that I don't think it was about so much about the judgment, but it was about the fact that I wanted to find out who I was. And actually, sexuality is every aspect of us as human beings. So it was about finding out about who I was. And that was the path I chose to take. Some people um, will choose other paths, whether it's religion, whether it's, a, it's it, there's so many different paths we can all walk. The fact that they're all kind of part of the same thing, they're all energy, they're all an expression of who we are. And that was my way of expressing who I was and finding out who I was and actually one of the things I've come to realize is that actually it it's so close it, to define to define that I was in a world of kink actually the stuff I was doing was actually not that abnormal it wasn't it was just because we frame it and the judgment of the words that we use um you know it, we we take it to an extreme but actually I'm sure that there's a lot of lot of people that I was working with a lot of people around me that were living a similar life but mm. mine was one where I, I wanted to explore it to such a level. And I think because, because it was, because there's so much shame, there's a thing about shame that once you're in it, there's an exploration to find out because you kind of want to overcome this fear and shame. So you're looking for other things and then you, you find something and you're exploring it more and then you look for something else. And there's, there's just this constant growth then of trying to find out who you are. Okay, so that's a shaming thing. Let me try something else. Maybe that would be okay. And then it kind of escalates in that you're just trying to explore 
but the labels that become attached to these things just escalate into the point where we just become so heavy in that energy of the life we live in and stuck i would say because completely so so the shame because you said something very interesting where you said the shame was or the judgment was something that was on yourself that you did yourself and because others around you didn't have that much judgment and yet at the same time we also know that shame or judgment comes from others so does it have to do with how much space do you give yourself is that where the inner journey comes into this I think so, and certainly when I, I left teaching a lot and gave myself that space to explore it, that understanding energy, understanding who I was, and certainly understanding how how uh, spiritual intimacy can be, how connecting it can be. One of the things I found really interesting is when I trained as a mindfulness coach, um, we were being explained, it was being explained to us that it was moment to moment, non-judgmental awareness, it was being present in that moment, it was about them being completely at one with that exploration. Mm. And it suddenly occurred to me that actually when I'd been a submissive, when I'd been in a place of surrender, in a dominant, in a kind of fetish scene, that actually I'd been at my most mindful place, that in that moment there was nowhere else for my mind to go, that actually surrendering and giving myself up in a place of trust, in a place of consent and boundaries, and with all the communication that goes with that, I was absolutely, the, it was the most mindful experience. I'd already been doing it for 20 years. I'd been mindful. And I was sitting on this course, becoming a mindful coach, thinking, I, I get it because I, I've been there and I understand what that means. And I understand how it feels in my body and how I can connect with Mother Earth and I can connect with my skin and my flesh and my energy and all the things that come with that and be present that was part of that experience and it just for me it was just so interesting to, to kind of find that comparison that actually as a submissive I was being mindful so, but what is then submissive because I must say when I am um, when I think of the word submissive and I get a naughty smile on my face <laughs> <laughs> that was yeah one. yeah that one <laughs> but when i think of being when i think of submissive to be honest i mean let's just let's just make it general and you know the idea of 50 shades of gray and i'm talking about the books because i haven't seen the film but what i'm talking about is then i get that image of a woman on her knees barely dressed with a chain around her neck being submissive would you say that in that image, that is where there is space for mindfulness. Okay, let me just say something firstly Thank about you. 50 Shades of Grey. What is then submissive? Yeah. Well, because Fifty Shades of Grey, as much as it was a, a beautiful book and, and a lovely film, there wasn't much evidence portrayed of consent, communication, and boundaries. Beautiful. And within and within any of that, that is absolutely fundamental. But actually, it's whatever you want it to be. Yes, if you want to have the collar and the chain. Yes, if you want to have the role play and you you know the, the the cross and be tied up, but actually it doesn't actually matter as long as it's two consenting adults. How you frame submissive, it could be about surrendering to a massage is submissive. When I do tantric massage, mm. my clients surrender to the touch. It's about receiving completely in a spiritual space where they can connect to their body. They are surrendering. They are submissive. Their energy is surrendered to me. So and it may be that it is that they're tied up because they want to surrender in a different way. But actually, a submissive it, it, it is how you frame it. And it is a surrender. A submissive is a surrender. I mm. love, and actually, I do love that you're saying that um, it's, it's, it really does, to me, it gives that word submissive, gives it more space. It, that already has already given taken it out of the shadows for me, where you say, being submissive is surrender, just like having a, allowing someone to massage you or or even acupuncture or someone washing your hair. That, how, that, can, and, how, can, sorry, how can something so beautiful be full of shame and fear? Like however you frame that, to say that I'm a submissive and that I enjoy surrendering to another human being that I trust completely, that I have been so confident with my consent and my boundaries that I can completely give myself up to them in whatever that looks like to have that then framed in shame and fear just mm. seems the most ridiculous <laughs> the most ridiculous thing but when you then talk about it in a world of kink and fetish 
it just gives it a whole different connotation and actually that's where the self-judgment comes in and is that but that's only the self-judgment i would say is because social media or society because of course that was also i mean before the tv it was also something hidden you know and uh, <laughs> and a, a, a memory came up was that as a little girl as a little girl uh, i i dreamt of being in a boudoir and uh, like a <laughs> like um a very luxurious um whorehouse but of course it wouldn't be whore because that it would be that and and for me that that beaut that was beautiful for me as a girl and this is oh, darn i don't know why i'm sharing this <laughs> okay. but for me that was so beautiful to be able to be of service and getting and giving to others in a beautiful way and get it and and there's here's the difference and getting the value that you are worth so it was a luxurious whorehouse is what i'm trying to tell you that was my little girl thing my, and, and it really was a dream i, I really yeah that <laughs> sorry i didn't that was me going off so <laughs> how would you do with that dream <laughs> <laughs> but this is where it i think the truth of it is it's all energy and actually it's our choice how we express it hmm. so whether that whether that's through a tantric massage whether that's through bdsm whether that's through kink whatever term we want to use it's about, it's an energy within us that we have a right as a human being to express. Mm. And it's only because of social media, it's only because of things that portrayed, it's only because of how society has shaped us. And actually, if we're standing in our power and we're being our best self, there is no judgment. We, there is, how can there be judgment if we're showing up as authentic? As long as we're not hurting anybody, as long as it's the consent and the boundaries, as long as those things are in place, there is absolutely nothing wrong in two human beings exploring and having fun. Surely and, that's what life's about. Let's have some fun. <laughs> wow. This is, this, it's, so, it's so beautiful how this taboo, and it is a taboo, and let me then mention it. There is a big taboo around sex. There is a big taboo around um, sexuality, um, that is not, let's say, the missionary. <laughs> and even me saying the word is like, really? But even then, you know, even different positionings. Uh, so let alone tools or yeah. let alone expressions or let alone, um, and so I can well understand that sexuality could be quite frustrating uh, if it is a taboo, the sexuality of it. Would you like to talk about the taboo of it? Oh, where do you start? Again, it's 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 social media. It's it's influences from, I would say, parents, but generational influences. We've got an energy that comes through that this has been going on a long, long time, and and I guess things are starting to change. But actually, I still don't think the conversations are being had. And there's that automatic kind of like Ooh, every time someone might even work say the word sex. But actually, that's how we got here. Most of us. <laughs> We're put on this earth because two people had sex i hate to ruin anybody's bubble but that's how we got here it's the most natural part and it's it's amazing it gives us pleasure it's if when we're having an orgasm it's our most in flow state why mm. would we want not want to explore it why would we not want to share that with another human being how can that be a taboo how can something so beautiful and so intimate and so connecting whether it's with one person two people like however we want to express ourselves it's a sharing and it's a connection and it's energy and it's experiencing and exploring life it's about a life force it's about a whole energy of of being creative and being in the moment and being present and being excited about who we are so How what type of people do come to you for help in the, to in with regards to their sexuality what type of people um and yeah do, do you attract in that in in what in your work let's say in in how to, yeah how do you help people so for the it's been sort of the last three or four years i've worked with um transgender clients who are transitioning from one energy to another should we say before and after operations so we've done energy work and we've done massage helping them accept and work with Except for not right word, but helping them work through the transition between the two energies on a physical level and an energetic. So working we're talking with, about going from male to female or from female to male. I've I've worked with worked with both, uh, predominantly male to female, 
Um, so helping them explore their new female body after they're old, which is an absolute honour, um, to allow them to connect with that part of them. Um, I've worked a lot of men. I attract a lot of middle-aged, I don't know if that's something to celebrate, but a lot of middle-aged men come to me <laughs> to explore and reconnect, often after um, breakups, often after uh, family loss, home loss, just to reconnect and find out who they are, work with their energy and connect to the physical without having sex. Mm. We all like oh. to be touched. That's so important. Touch. And actually for a man to surrender to mm. a touch where he doesn't have to give for many men is huge because ego gets in the way that they need to give something back. And actually to have the boundaries set where you are just receiving um, in the massage, we do meditations, we um, connect through mindfulness, we have rituals, body honouring. It's a, it's a, the most spiritual, beautiful thing that anyone can offer someone. It's a three, four hour experience that's just solely connecting and you sink into your body and you just experience. And just for a man to take that time for himself and experience and connect with his body without ego and I've got to do this and I've got to do that we've all experienced in the bedroom when we're connecting with somebody that we're distant in in what we're being but to actually for all to connect with that body to connect with their heart to connect with their chakras and their auras and all of that energy um for a man is a, a huge thing to do and can be quite emotional um I've worked with women that have been through trauma physical trauma and emotional trauma which is trapped in their body um particularly in their horror energy so they're manifesting energy in the lower chakras um oh, all sorts of clients all sorts of clients that have come that i've supported it's made it's either disconnected from their own body mm -hmm. or they've disconnected from their partner which again can be through post the stress the syndrome. no because um no it's, it's very different some people can connect with their own physical in whether that's self-pleasure whether that's just how they show up in the world in the confidence but actually there's a whole different um, scenario of, again, shame and fear that people sometimes face when they're faced with being intimate with somebody else. And yes. that can be very different. So to connect to themselves, they might be confident with, but to actually allow someone else into that space and allow someone to touch them. And it might be about a certain area, it might be in a certain way, it might be a certain touch they've experienced that they don't want to experience again. To work through that in a safe space with somebody can actually completely change the dynamics of a relationship. So they can be quite different. But um, you were saying that about the men connecting with their uh, sexuality in the receiving side of things. Yeah. Um, and that um, is that the, 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 the feminine side of things? Is that which, how, would you would, how you would call it? Because it could also be that there are men that are in the feminine side of things of receiving that aren't giving. I mean, there are also those. Do you help those out? Or can they, is that also something that you come across? I would, I would say, in the experience of a tantric massage for a man, there's a, there's a, there's a twofold there because actually, not only are they connecting with their body, but they're understanding how to touch and how it can be touched. Uh, so they're, they although they're connecting with their energy, they're also understanding the feminine because a tantric massage is very much connected to a feminine energy. It doesn't have to be. It can be quite raucous and and connect into a stronger energy but on the whole it's quite a feminine energy so actually a lot of men have received a tantric massage <clears throat> which is quite intimate it works with the whole body and actually said that actually some of it has been emotional because they've realized how they maybe miss 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 um I want to say mishandled. Oh, just mishandled the feminine. So where they've they've been with a woman, and maybe because they've watched lots of porn, or just because how they portrayed intimacy to be, that actually how they've how they've shared their energy with a woman hasn't been that supportive. And actually, what they find when they come for a tantric massage is actually that connection, the intimacy on a on a touch basis. That they've they've understood that there's a different way. Well, that is true. Somebody. Well, that is true because, um, and that is a shame because you mentioned porn. Is that um, we are educated to actually either, um, well, you know, actually, you know, at school it was, you know, you got that pink woman. No, you had the pink woman, <laughs> and you had the blue man. Yeah, like that because of course they didn't do soit en neuf, which <laughs> at school, but you had. You had the pink woman underneath and the blue man on top 
with the penis going in like that. And that was it. And then you had that picture of the, the, the sperm going to the, the ovaries. I was like, okay. <laughs> so is that, that was, and I was like, is that, is that sex? And by the time that you figure, figure it out, you might be a bit too late or already damaged in your self image. Even the word sex, though, people, that kind of whole, it's about intercourse, it's its just so much bigger than that. You know, you can connect with someone. In tantric massage, we, I quite often have clients that have whole body orgasms through touch. There's no there's no, no intercourse, there's no penet penetration, it's just connecting to the body, connecting mm. to the skin, to the sensuality, to, to themselves, can create such an energy within somebody that they can express it. Sex is huge, it's not about... It's not about intercourse, and I think that's the bit we probably miss in sexuality. Yes. Um, and the fear and shame then is when we start stepping out of that box and exploring it in other ways. So whether that's through dabbling and trying other things, whether that's through kink, whether it's through pain and pleasure, whether it's through submission, whatever it's through, if we step outside that stereotypical box of... The blue and the pink woman doing yeah. the standard, then you feel shame because you're not doing the standard. Because because the people aren't educated enough to understand that actually all the rest is, is perfectly normal as well. Mm. Because we're human beings that are here on earth to explore and be and be present with who we are. So actually, sexual education needs to be changed. Is that what you're saying? Oh yes. <laughs> so what I'm saying, yeah, because it's fear based. At school, I was taught that. A man and a woman make a baby and you've got to be really careful not to get her pregnant and you've got to use contraception and not get a disease and it's all fear-based. No one told me it was the most amazing experience I'd ever have that it would be my most in flow state and I would meet some amazing people that I could connect with in a really special way. That was never mentioned. <laughs> it was yeah. never said. And actually, one of the programmes I'm currently writing is about going into schools and educating young people about consent, boundaries and communication, and that sex is fun. Mm. But to make I, sure you put those things in place because then you can explore it safely. So, so actually, uh, we need to uh, rediscover, if we have ever discovered it, but I mean, I'm talking about going back. I mean, when did we actually know that sex was pleasure? I'd almost say, ooh, I would almost say in, in the cave times because, <laughs> but then again, was that pleasurable because you were game for everyone? So I don't know. When well, has the past sex been pleasurable? If you do your research, swinging is not a new phenomenon. It's like that's been going on forever. Like, you know, where the keys in the bowl don't exist anymore. But actually, that's been going like these things are not new. They're not new. It's yeah. just that we've, we've created an, uh, a culture where they're not acceptable. And that's wrong because actually, they're just about people expressing who they are. Um, and it doesn't have to be, you know, you know, it doesn't have to be about kink and stuff. We're talking about people that about their sexuality of being gay and bi and all those things that are starting to, mm. the energy is starting to move. But actually, there's still taboos around different things um, that aren't supportive of people being able to stand in their power and live the life they're here to live. So what would you say among your clients, among your customers, what would you say is the core thing that they ask you? What is the most regular thing that they come to you for? Connection. Connection. And they just want to connect. They've lost connection. They've lost that, that ability. Um, I would say the fear and shame. The, the lovely thing I, I love about my, my work I do is that actually the fact that people even turn up at my door means that it's a success. Mm. Because actually the fact that they've gone, there's something not right for me. I need to try and sort my energy out, find a connection, have a tantric massage, experience something different. Um, something that's kind of even to, tantric massage in itself can be a taboo so the fact they've even turned up for me is like do you know what if we just have a conversation and you go home that's that 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 could be enough for that person that they've actually taken action to look at something in a different way well that in um, itself is already breaking out of the pattern a hundred percent to just to be able to say I need I need to be touched I need someone to connect with me I need someone to move energy through me I need to rediscover who I am and connect to my physical body and then the energy work I do can support people to address any of the issues that are underlining for that so people that have and as adults we've been through all sorts of stuff that we don't even know we've been through 
and if you believe in past lives and all that sort of thing, we're carrying all this energy that we don't always know what to do with. So it's just about people having a space to connect to who they are and any and, and fear and shame don't have to be around sex to show up in sexuality. Fear and shame. Yeah, repeat that, yeah. Okay, so we can have fear and shame about lots of things in our life. It can be about the way we brought up, it could be about religion, it could be about all sorts of things. Shame and fear can be attached to so many different aspects of our life. Yes. But they will show up in sexuality because it's the core of who we are. It's well, that's it. It's the fundamental it's core. So it's going to show up in the bedroom. It's going to show up in intimacy. It doesn't matter what it is. You know, if we've had a really strict upbringing where sex wasn't talked about, how do you then express yourself in the express yourself in the bedroom if those things were never discussed and it's never been part of your life? Yeah. yeah. Actually, I can feel myself becoming emotional with the fact that we are all so bound and shut down in our communication, in our basic needs, in acknowledging what it is that we want, what we need, what we ask because it is so recognizable. And um, that is the challenge. That is where we want to be, want to, where we want to end up back to, in this empowerment of women, it's sure it's about all of the other stuff, but it also is about finding and connecting with your voice, as you said before, your voice, your, 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 um, boundaries, the consent, conversations, all of that, and having fun. Oh, yes. Yeah. And, and, they, they, and they go together in life. Like, it's not just in the bedroom. You know, yeah. as long as we've got those things in place, we can do anything we want to do. There is no, everything is just, is just energy. You know, as I said to you, the, the mindfulness ties, ties in for me with, with kink and um, consent boundaries in communication are absolutely fundamental in the swinging scene. You know, I would not dream of engaging in a scenario in any aspect of swinging without having those things in place. It's all part of the same thing. Mm. We've just put things in certain boxes and they've become taboos or they've become subjects that we find difficult to talk about when actually they're all, they're all the same thing. It's just about how we're expressing it and about how as society we've put the lid on certain Not things. Society. And yes, it's, it's, as you said, um, as you were talking, something entered is like um, the church, let's say. And I know we're not going to go into that too deeply here because it's not the theme of this subject. But the church system has put a lid on expression of sexuality in fact goddess has been totally eradicated and is now finding her way back and yet as you are talking about it i realize that where the masculine church let's say and i'm not judging men because i love men i love men women i love men but um where the masculine church has shut down the women the men have also become chained because they can't they don't have lost their connection with their feminine side because of that became a taboo is that what you were trying to say is that what the underlying message is in all of this Lorraine I, I think that happens in in all sorts of walks of life and in all sorts of situations I think we've become I, I think certainly for the masculine there's a, a confusion in you know we, we as parents we want our men to grow up big and strong we tell them not to cry we tell them not to show their emotions um and not to express themselves and it's like you know be a big boy and and act as, as you should as a man and then as, as a woman we meet a man and we want them to show their emotions and we want them to connect to themselves and they're like well, hang on a minute my mother spent 20 odd years telling me not to do those things and now I've met another woman who wants me to be like that and I think men don't always know and I don't think that's just religion I think it is culture I think it's social media I think it's t you know tv pro it goes as far as just simple tv programs about how roles are played out in life about how genders are portrayed about how stereotyping. Are completely stereotyping completely and i think we're, we're so attached to that um and you know for men to be able to express themselves not necessarily even attached to religion i think is really important and for women you know we're, we're put into these boxes still you know women going out to work now men um, being able to express themselves in the way they dress and, and the things they want to do and wearing a pink t-shirt and like whatever it is and is that the true expression or is that the reverse going the other way swinging <laughs> swinging the other way <laughs> and what, what do you mean sorry 
sorry, yeah, we just got distracted by the word swinging. But is it, <laughs> <laughs> but is well, it my favorite so, words, it's fine. <laughs> is, is it so that in the, the women now go, dressing up in a certain way and going to work and men uh, wearing the pink t-shirts, is that swinging in the other direction of where the men are now too feminine? Is that what, it, and, and the women are too masculine? Is that, or is it that we are now finding a balance, trying to find an equilibrium that actually works? Does it matter? Like, are we not both part of the masculine and the feminine? We've all got the yin and the yang. How, why do we need to be and one or the that's other? that's what you mean. And that's what you mean in the sense of the stereotyping. To, yeah. Why do we need to be... Why, why do we... I, I'm, I'm me. I'm... Mm. I, we can, I, I can get, you know, I've got the labels that I put on myself, but actually at the end of the day, I'm me and how I choose to express myself is, yeah. is my choice. Um, and, and some days I'm in my masculine and some days I'm in my feminine. Mm. And, and everyone should be able to do that. I have men turn up in ladies' underwear and it's the only space they can do that. And it's not about the ladies' underwear. It's about connecting to a feminine energy. It's about the fact that they like lace. There's nothing wrong with like. We're, we're in social media and fashion did we take that away from men that silk and lace were for women like exactly. how, how do these simple things these simple things that actually drive well, me mad I <laughs> get just, it. for men that's their only opportunity or for some men that's one of their opportunities to connect to their feminine because they don't know how to do it on an emotional physical uh, an emotional level because we we've, we've just not provided that space for them to do it yeah. so they've then got to go and find something else and that's what they connect with and they just want to be accepted for being a human being it's irrelevant of whether they're a man or a woman it's just and about that, and that's true and so also for women it is quite a challenge where the women are supposed to be sweet spoken dressing a certain way or whatever and or whatever because actually I don't really care but what I'm trying to say is, is that there is also the judgment of the woman who tends to seem to be more masculine and also that part hey your hair is too short or and 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 or whatever so it is a, it is a, do you think that this process can be healed in the near future? Are we going to experience this? Oh, let's hope so. It's Because like, mm. it's all about fear and shame, isn't it? It's fear of being who we want to be and how we want to show up. Yeah. It's shame of not fitting into the norms of whatever. And they vary, obviously, for, you know, from country to country, from place to place, from community to community, they vary. You know, my, 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 um, taboo areas of my life when I'm in those spaces when I'm in the swinging scene when I'm doing the things that I enjoy doing they're not a taboo I'm with people from all walks of life sharing a common common thread common sharing a common interest so that's not the taboo it's when you take me out and put me in another pocket of life pocket. But actually by a little pocket of life yeah. Um, yeah, so yeah, if yeah. we actually have these conversations and 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 speak to people about actually life then yeah. we can break well, down it. some of those taboos. Well, that's it. I reacted to the word pocket because that sounded very confining. I, I, you said the word pocket of life and I immediately felt constraint. Yeah. And that wanting to get out of it. Yo, we're not meant to be in a pocket of life. We are meant to be who we are. Wonderful. So, Lorraine, just as we are going to be starting to round off now, what would you say are our tips um, or, or ad, what would your advice be to for us to um, overcome our shame and embrace our sexuality? You know, so how would you? What tips would you give us for that? I think um, having the conversations, um, whether that's with a partner, whether it's with friends, just open up that conversation about things, even if it's in kind of tongue-in-cheek conversations of just talking to people and about sexuality, about sex. Um, also, I would say research, read, because actually what you think is a taboo is not. You know, mindfulness and kink exists. Um, swinging is a real world that lots of people from all sorts of walks of life are in. So read, read and research because you won't, you won't understand and you'll feel isolated and you'll be in that state of fear and shame unless you give yourself the knowledge to understand that actually you're not the only one. That likes and it's really quite enjoys, liberating. Yeah, that I like and enjoys other things. And there's so much stuff out there that's a, such an amazing read. Um, and I would say face the fear 
because it's an energy, it's a thought. We can all change our thoughts. Fear is not a real thing. It's just something we've placed to stop ourselves from moving forward. It's a thing, you know, fear, we, we can change fear. We can turn fear. So I would say face fear and shake the shame because actually, again, shame is something we do to ourselves. It's not a real thing either. Shame is what we we put on ourselves. It's a label. It's like a coat. Yeah, it's like something that we accept. It's not a real thing. It doesn't. We we. It's you know. It's we. Uh, you know. I would say when I was in a space of shame, I am not good enough. For who? You know, I'm not good enough to be a teacher. I'm not good enough to be a mum. I'm not good enough to be a daughter. Actually, I am, and I'm mm. good at all of those. But I put the coat on. I wore the shame because I didn't know and I didn't have the knowledge that I've got now. And that's what you mean with shake the shame. It's more like shake it's it off. Shame. Just shake yeah. that coat off. It because exists. that's true. Where someone says, aren't you ashamed? No. no. But here it is. Because someone asks me that, it's like <gasps> that, that coat starts to come on. It's like, oh, am I supposed to have been ashamed? Yeah. And that. And that is where we can liberate ourselves. Thank you very much. It's, that's very clear what you're now saying. Wow. So is actually the summary of all of this is that um consent and communication and you had something else that you said it's consent communication and boundaries consent um, communication and boundaries are yeah. very important so that yeah. is actually key in everything which of course is what we are looking for in our lives in our empowerment journey and actually if we have those things fear and shame will break down because if we're communicating and if we know we're in a safe space, safe space to explore things, in that we've got the consent, then we can open those conversations and have fun mm. with our sexuality and, and um, play with our boundaries. Mm. Yeah. Thank you very much, Lorraine. Thank you, lovely viewers. I didn't say, you know, if you're watching live, do a hashtag live. And if you're watching in the replay, do a hashtag replay because I was so into this conversation. So I want to say thank you once again, Lorraine. And thank you, lovely viewers who are watching coming on and off live. And also, of course, those who are watching it at a later time. Thank you for taking the time to journey with us. And Lorraine, thank you for so much for speaking on the sexuality fear and shame because it is such a big and important subject and I have learned a lot and I know that many viewers have too so thank you very much and lovely ladies I will see you soon Lorraine is there anything else that you would like to share as we are coming to the end of our broadcast shake the sh <laughs> shake the shame and face the fear and just have fun thank you very much and with that lovely ladies I will be seeing you another time Shannon Gray, Goddess Creations goodbye thank you <laughs>